Paiutsu after only one thing. If we keep them here, they're gonna get them. You move out in five minutes with troopers Burke and Sloan and the prisoner. I'll give you covering fire to get you started, then fight a delaying action to give you some running room. Ponderosa Ranch. Due west of here. Now move out, sir. Yes, sir. When I heard gunshots. Yeah. Let's go. Picked up that small war party just off the draw. How many men did you lose? Those two. Who's your prisoner, Sergeant? Wabuska. The Paiute who calls himself a god. Wabuska, he's the one who's heading up those raiding parties, isn't he? That's right. We captured him three days ago, and we've had to fight to keep him ever since. Nobody's going to rest real easy until he's in federal prison. Maybe you can help me. I'm supposed to turn him over to the commanding officer of the Virginia City 116th Militia, Major Ben Cartwright. Well, Sergeant, I'm Ben Cartwright. Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa? Yeah, but 116th was deactivated years ago. I'm Colonel Brill, sir. You and the 116th have just been called active duty. set fire to his mattress last night. Tried to burn down the jail. If it wasn't for Hack there, he could have done it. He had the thing burning pretty well when the smoke woke me up. Jail burn. But not Wabuska. Fire, wind, storm, and water are all friends of Wabuska. Even bullets cannot hurt me. Bad enough, Obuska, believe me. He's got the whole Paiute tribe believing. Ah, Ben, I guess we all knew the militia could be reactivated. It's been a long time. You and I are a lot older. Yeah, we sure are. And I got my orders. Maybe if I can get Obuska to Fort Churchill, the rest of the chiefs will listen to reason. I don't envy you the job, Ben. But I gotta admit, I'll be happy to get him out of here. 
I'll be just as glad to be rid of him as you are. Hey, Paul. Sergeant Anchor and Little Joe did all right. They got about 20 men coming down the street toward the jail. Well, there's still some spirit in the old 116th, see? Detail! Paul! You better join in, sir. Right, Paul. Yeah, that is right. Major Paul. Sir. Sergeant? The son and I found 20 men, sir. We lost two coming down the street. Made the mistake of passing by a saloon. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, may I be short and simple? We've all been together in the 116th. And I've been recalled to active duty and empowered to organize a detail. Uh, I'm looking for volunteers. Well, it might help if, uh, if you told us what we were volunteering for, Ben. I'm organizing an escort detail. Take a prisoner to Fort Churchill. Oh, now, wait. Wait a minute, Ben. I'm not even sure that you have the right to call us together, but I'd overlook that. If it's my wife and kids I'm defending. That's a prisoner detail, like I said. It's that Wabuska, ain't it? You think I'd do anything to defend him? I say hang him and get it over with. Yeah, I say. Hold it. It's a long ride. I came here looking for volunteers, not asking for conversation. If it's the town that needed defending, I'd be the first one to come forward. But I don't know anybody who'd volunteer to take that Paiute to Fort Churchill. What with the whole country crawling with war parties. Are there any volunteers? Come on, Spence. We've been hanging around this town long enough. <laughs> this is our chance to get to Abilene. Oh, with a bunch like this, we ought to make it through Indian country all right. Is that right? You and Joe going? That's right. Then I am, too. Tim Kelly volunteering. I say when it comes to fighting, one good cowhand is as good as four or five of them Paiutes. This ought to be a chance to prove it. Sorry, Ben. You understand, Ben. Foot caught in a, in a bar rail at Silver Dollar. Guess I'd been here sooner. I hear tell them Piotes got a whole new special brew. And I, I'd kind of like to try that one. So you count me in all, all the way. Now, that Pete Hansen there, he's got my brother Hack locked up for busting a chair over my head. Now, you tell old Pete to let him out, and, and Hack will come along with us. How about it, Pete? If we can get those two to fight Indians instead of each other, you'll have a couple of good men. Hey, hack boy! I volunteered for you. Now make sure you come along or I'll move your jaw sideways some. I hear you, but you ain't gonna knock my jaw over none. He'll be with you, Major. Sergeant, round up some supplies and ammunition for ten men for five days. The rest of you men, get your horses. Be back in an hour. Dismiss it. Indian country from here on out. Major, begging your pardon, sir, but I think we'd be better off without some of these men. Which ones? Well, those two brothers. Hey, give me some of that, will you? Give me that back. I'll give it to you. You, you young boys are like hack. You know I always drink, Bert. What about him? Fighting? Unreliable? Sergeant, have you ever tried to work out the night before? Not soon. Yes, sir, I have. Lots of times? Yes, sir. You got over it, didn't you? Well, they will, too.
What about that trigger-happy kid? He's liable to shoot himself in the leg or shoot one of us before we get to the top of that rise. Yeah, that's true. He might. But we're going to keep him on anyhow. We'll ride a scouting order from here on in. Yes, sir. I'll ride points, show the men how. He's a god. He got teeth like a wolf. No. This is a cold camp. Iron rations, no fires, no noise. You rode point today. That's a risky job. You stuck your neck out. It's got no long future, Spencer. That's why we change every day. Your duty tomorrow. I hope you're lucky. <laughs> You'd miss me, huh? No, but uh, but if you're lucky. We might all reach Fort Churchill alive. As good a spot as any for my watch. I can see the whole valley from here. Tim, I'm gonna spot you on the other side of camp. Thank you. Post. Now, Kelly, you keep a sharp watch. If you see or hear anything wrong, whistle like this. You bet, sir. And Kelly, remember, you're not to leave this watch. Don't worry, Major. Ain't nothing gonna happen that I can't handle. Like I said, them Paiutes ain't much. Now, don't try to be a hero. If you see or hear anything wrong, Have some of those peaches, I sure be obliged. It's been a while since I ate. Major! Where'd you come from? Out there. Tied up friend here. Looks like you could uh, give a bobcat the first bite. Come on with a fur coat. He just popped up, Major. I didn't see him or hear him come in. My name's Candy. Where are you from? Any town within 500 miles east of here. I've been there. What's your business? Trying to stay alive. How'd you find this camp? Simple. I heard it. I uh, walked upwind to the voices. I saw the guards. I didn't want to bother them, so I just walked on in. Uh, that Paiute heard me coming. He was watching and waiting when I walked up. I'm the only one that's doing any talking. Any of you men got names? Cartwright. Major Cartwright. Major? That sounds like Army. Militia. Out at 16th. A militia, army, what's the difference? A big difference. No offense to the major. But if this was a regular army detail, you'd never got past those guards. 
Or maybe not, but I sure would have tried. I sure am hungry, Sergeant. Could I have a can of those peaches now? This one sing, and you'll bring them all right here. Are you come? You die, all of you. One more sound, and you'll be chewing on this all the way to Fort Churchill. Candy. Candy. Now, what kind of name would that be? My name? After a while, it won't sound any funnier than uh, Steve. Or a hoss. You've just come from the country which we're headed. What's it like out there? You're going to run into just about every Paiute in this part of the world. And some Shoshone, and some Utes. All of them wearing war paint and hunting for scalps. Don't ask me how many. I was too busy hiding and too scared to count. You said you walked in here. Where'd you leave your horse? About two days, about 40 miles behind. We shot out from under me. You wouldn't have an extra horse, would you? Afraid of that. <sighs> Tell you what, I'll settle for another can of peaches. Devil did he go? I wish I knew. Hey, don't. What's the report? It's pretty quiet. No sign of that candy, fella. Few night birds and some field mice making enough noise to keep me company, and that's it. They keep looking at those shadows long enough, they all begin to look like Paiutes. Yeah. Well, just as long as they don't make any sudden moves. <laughs> right. I'll see you a little later. I put this stuff with Keller's six gun and carbine. Well, delivered to his next of kin, if and when. The reason he's dead, he didn't obey orders. If he'd have stayed where the Major put him, even if he'd have whistled like he was told, he'd still be alive now. It is no matter. Tomorrow you all die. I was just telling him, Major, that on a mission like this, when one man disobeys orders, 
he can get a lot of us killed. That's right. Sure makes a fella feel good. Everybody's so glad to see him. Well, we might be. If we know where you've been and why. Horse hunting. I told you I've been walking for two days. I figured those Paiutes owed me a horse. It took me an hour to find him. At least two hours unaccounted for. I wanted to make sure that brave was alone. There's only one set of tracks leading in. There's no smoke on the wind anywhere close. The one thing I didn't figure was the kind of horse I was going to find. You know this horse, Sergeant? Colonel Brill's mount. A troop must have been completely wiped out after we left with the prisoner. Just as Wabuska promised. Paiute, Shoshone, Ute. Kill all soldiers. All white men. One more sound, you're going to be wearing that gag. Well, at any rate, they're going to be looking for this horse come first light. No, we'll be gone by that time. You coming with us? I hadn't figured to. I got no love for the militia or the army. Saluting and uh, taking orders and saying, sir, just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I started off on my own when I found him. Why did you come back? Got lonesome. I figure when the Paiutes start taking horses away from the cavalry, a man alone doesn't stand much of a chance. So I'd like to ride with you. I'll even learn to salute. You learn to obey orders. Yes, Major. All right, from now on, we ride two-man point. Second one keeps the first one in sight. He keeps in sight of the main body himself. We'll leave it an hour. Yes, sir. Spence, he ought to still be in sight. Thank you. 
Gotta get yourself a little shot, eye. Yes, sir. I got the guard duty right before dawn. Have a good rest. Thank you, sir. seen another sunrise anyway. And after what happened to Spence yesterday, I thought those Indians would be here last night. Come on, get up, will you? Hey, you can sleep when we get back to Virginia City. Get up. Where's that, Joe? You stand and watch. You'll leave me about 2 o'clock this morning. jail and I brought him out here just to get him killed I think it is. Yeah, that's when it. One chief, I didn't think could be stampeded into making more.
turn. What they want you to do? They want you to go out there so they can kill you. So we can all go out there one by one, and they can kill us one by one. They're waiting, just wait, not there, Major. Now listen, be quiet. Look what they did to be hack. Quiet. Quiet. Did you hear me? Oh, you gonna stay with the detail, and you are gonna obey orders? Do you understand? Hack. Oh, hack. <laughs> Be up shortly. They'll wait for full dawn now. I believe you're right. I'll trick back every half hour. Oh, Major, with your permission, sir, there's something I'd like to get off my mind. Back there in Virginia City, when I saw the size and shape of this detail, I came within an inch of deserting. Cow hands, plot busters. They didn't know a hand salute from a water bucket. I was sure that if they saw one Paiute or heard one shot fired, that they'd scatter so far and fast it'd take two weeks hard riding just to get them in sight again. Kind of wrong, wasn't I, Major? The Cloudbuster showed me how. That first day was just like I thought it'd be, but. But after that first night, they pulled together quicker than any group I ever saw. Yeah, they're good men. All of them. Yes. It's your supper, if that's what you want to do with it. It's all right with me. Tonight they gather from all the camps. Tomorrow they set me free. You've said that more times than I can count. Now, since you don't want to eat, I don't want to listen. Why don't you just open up? Tomorrow they kill you and all right then. What were you saying? <laughs> That's what I thought. Coyotes? Should be dawn in about four hours. We'll move out in two. And they'll be waiting for us. Big reception party. You came in from that way. How far are we from Fort Churchill? 
Is the crow flies or, or dodging war party? Uh, straight line. About eight, ten hours. Not the Paiutes. Shoshones and Utes all banded together out there to stop us. That could be just plain too far. Belgian Steve, sir. I know. I saw it. Make the odds about ten to one. Yeah. Now stay there. Just at a range until they find out what we're going to do with, with the chief and Wabuska. Why you do this? Nothing can save you now. for many years. I've been to your house. You've been to my house. We've exchanged many gifts of friendship. Long ago, yes. But now, all changed. You and I have not changed. We are still the same. But out there, things have changed. Many people have died. Many more will die. Thousands of soldiers will come. Your tribes will be destroyed, all of them. We will not die. Only the white men will die this time. Bullets will not hurt Wabuska. He laughs at white men's guns, and he will teach us his magic. Wunetka, you're a wise man. How can you believe this? Oh, look at him. Wabuska, he rides through hundreds of bullets all this day, and not one harmed him. We rode through the same fire. Nothing happened to us. We were just lucky in the rest, that's all, Chief. He cannot be hurt. He will never die. It is written, 
Wabusko will lead our people to victory everywhere. In my own lodge, with my own rifle, I fired at him, and the bullet leave no mark. Well, that guy tricked you. No, he has great power, power to destroy our enemies. He's a man. He's a man like you and me. And if he has such magical powers, why doesn't he use them? Why doesn't he make himself disappear in a puff of smoke? Why does he allow himself to be captured by us? It was my wish. Take me to your strongest fort. I will melt away. Your strongest iron cannot hold me. All right, Winnick. Let's find out if he's a man or a god. If I should have put it into him, you bleed and he'll die. Major, you can't do that, sir. Sergeant, this is my responsibility. What are you afraid of, Opuska? This is only a white man's bullet. White men's bullets cannot harm you. You've said so many times. You're a god. You have magical powers. All right, let's see how these magical powers work right now. Stop him! Stop him! Oh, Wabuska, I see fear in your heart. You tremble like a woman. For this one, my braves have died. <laughs> He bleeds, like any man. I have been a fool. What do you do with us now? Go back to your people. Tell them Obuska bleeds. Tell them he cries. Tell them he's no longer your leader. Tell them that they must allow us to go through to Fort Churchill, where he'll be punished. And speak to all your tribes. Say to them that there must be no more waste of lives, that no more blood must run in the sand again as it ran today, white man's or red man's. Tell them there must be no more false gods. Tell them this, Chief Winnick. Would you shot him? You saw the death, the blood, the senselessness. Would I have shot him? Would you? I'll stick charge of prison. thing I forgot to ask. Yeah. What's this military duty pay? Volunteer duty, food, bandages as needed, and a big vote of thanks. Well, uh, do you think that vote of thanks could be stretched to include a horse and a saddle? You recall that Paiute kind of shot mine out from under me. Yeah, I recall. Yeah, I guess it could include that much. And more, maybe. We're gonna need some roundup hands once we get back to the ranch. Be hard work, but one thing for sure, the power won't be shooting your horse out in money. Oh, no thanks. I'm not looking for a steady job. I got a lot of traveling to do. Kind of sounds to me like the man doesn't like hard work. Now, wait a minute. The two of you never saw the day when I couldn't work you both right into the ground. I could show you more riding, more roping, more bulldogging. Looks like you just hired yourself another hand, Paul. All right. All right, for a while. 
But uh, it's got to cut both ways. I can leave anytime I get the notion, and you can send me down the road, same way. Sounds fair enough. Yeah, I guess it sounds fair enough. All right, boys, I guess we got ourselves a new hand. And mister, you got yourself a job. Thank you.